vice-présidente Smart City d'IBM. Donc j'ai un lourd défi, j'ai compris, parce que depuis ce matin, les sociétés euh, enchaînent avec des discours parfois euh, très proches. Donc je vais essayer en 20 minutes, une demi-heure, de, de vous montrer une différence. So we're going to have a vote on my propositions. I'm also a mayor of Adjoint sur Marne, which gives me a slightly different point of view on these issues. I'm going to talk to you in representing two minutes about IBM strategy. And you might be surprised at what we're doing today. And just like my Oracle colleague did present to you some examples. With our partners, we are trying to find ways in order to include our clients and within these strategies. I have a slightly different approach to Smart City. EBM is a society that was founded in 1911 very much centered around data. So there's 9,000 people working like this in France. It's a oui. company that pays its taxes in France, and I say that as an elected representative because I don't think everyone can say the same thing. And our plan today is to completely center on innovation. We're talking about smarter planets, and it's been using research in order to, we've got five Nobel Prizes working for us oh no, in France. The laboratory in Dublin. We're collaborating with them to see what, what we, we can, can bring, bring to the cities. We've also understood in the 90s that we couldn't do everything ourselves. So then we created a number of partnerships, first with Apple, with Twitter, a subject that was evoked earlier about Twitter. social networks and how to personalize your marketing. This evolution means that today we're a service company. It's continually changing, but it's always active. That's the big difference between us and our colleagues like Accenture or CAP. We're based on activity. On softwares that allow us to go quicker and bring so value to data. That we can bring quicker and quicker to analyzation. Because what's interesting isn't the data in itself, but rather the Analysis. how this can help us to in decision making. So we want to augment the four subjects that are important to the City. Mobility, network, big data, and analytics. And bring valor to this. These numbers are exchanged. Changing. The increasing number of people in the city. Even if these numbers are slightly vague, we understand that they are giantesque. In 2012, Chinese the people have seen ha more than half the population going to the cities. So the challenges are huge. Because urbanization is taking place. So that will be the topic of the COP21. There's 2% of the world's surface used by cities, and it, they produce 80% of CO2. So 1 million people, people join cities every day. The effect could be catastrophic. So cities are both an opportunity, because there's some high value there, some skills and some resources, but also a set of challenges that are huge. And we think that Digital technology will not solve all the problems, but we'll be able to bring better knowledge and different ways of acting to start to 
tackle the key in order to solve transport pollution and maintenance of energy, energy consumption. Finally, I'd like to say there's all these subjects we need to address. All and the so themes of the Congress, Congress at the moment has been around intelligent cities. So let me try to bring my own definition. Intelligent In city has always been around since even the time of Pericles. Pericles. The first example is we need to develop a platform that becomes a sort of service in a global viewpoint. And this platform will be in real time and it will Make allow us to use our mobile applications in order to access this information. For instance, I have... Because we use each time new data and we need to include all this data in a platform so we can use it and not reuse this. So what's interesting is proactive citizens to bring communication of the citizens and data. The third problem and the third solution is to use this data in funding, in transport. Either, either by sharing it with open data or by selling it. And find new uses for this data. For those who need it. So it's these three characteristics that, for me, are very important. A part of the definition of smart city. There's so more than... IBM is a very old company and has strong references. And starting from, from 2014, we're in a new phase of our program. Well, we want this data to allow people to connect with their city, even though it's a very complex system. There's not one answer. There's no single economic model. Every territory is Has different. Own so problems. we've tried to learn from these references to work with cities. So this data can be useful and work for the city. I'm going to focus on France in particular. With three or four examples. We have a program that's called OptiMode. In Lyon. Which, and now this program is finished, so we can analyze how this went. And this program was axed on mobility, and there were three main goals. The first one was to build a mobility platform. Like I said earlier, if there's no intelligent city with... If there's pl no platforms. So we need this data in time real, real time. And in a predictive way. If you look at opendata.com, .gov, you might be surprised by the nature of some data. But we need this to give value to more social interests for its citizens. So we try to really find the value of some data here. To be able to predict what's going to happen in transport. So in Lyon, the idea was to, one, predict reliably what was going to happen within one hour. And this is what we did in, in the, the laboratory in Dublin. And we were successful. So we were capable. With 95, at 95% accuracy. Now, what do we do with this information? Do we give this to people? To tell them, don't go in this area. It's That's not the objective. The objective is to augment three things. First one is to create a multimodal application. which was the f This was the first version of it. Then in Montpellier, we deployed the second version. We need an app that can predict, to tell people what's going to be the best ways to travel, depending on what t hour or depending on other constraints. So For maybe instance, I shouldn't take the car, maybe I should walk, depending on the conditions that the app gives me. And what the user wants. So that's the first point. Second point. At Lyon is how to control okay. traffic lights. When we see the system of traffic lights in France, they only have one face, always red. 
and green, or sometimes a little bit of... But it's never in real time or the reality of the environment so surrounding it. we need to be more precise with traffic lights. The third subject that's very interesting... Sometimes we have, with transport in the city, problems with transport that are electronic. We've got trams, for instance, but sometimes we want to install more of these into cities. To move around goods. Lines of networks and make this easier during the day to optimize your journey without using harmful gases and CO2 emissions. When we look at a model of our service cities, that can be monetized, because people will want to pay for their, tra their travel to be shorter. In Nice, We've started a project working with the platforms of the Metropolitan that is looking at a very important point of the intelligent city in terms of technology. If you look at li literature, there's 20 years since we've been looking at a intelligent city linked to technology. So I'm going to return to my definition. In terms of participation. What makes a difference is sharing technology. If we look at this map, we need a point of voluntary information. For about 100. And these are projects that have made at least 18 different units of the community working work together. together. Just that is an evolution compared to the previous situation. So in real time, we can show this information in order to give more precise predictions. For instance, thanks to the color, we can see how congested an area is. We've not only employed this with traffic, but sensors, also with sensors. But also with mobile information. And, and then we've, we've got also correlated this with other types of information. This might seem ridiculous, but what happens is during the summer there are festivals in small villages. And they have cargoes that are five tons heavy. And the waste created by these festivals can actually end up smelling bad. And the local town was not aware of this. So that when people arrived in the city in the evening, they could see this via their mobile apps. Instead of filling up the bins completely and having them overflow. So these platforms are far quicker than if people were talking together in the street or via the pen. The second, the last example of a city is with Montpellier. was presented by it's a project a global project so we ask talk about in France are we late with technology it seems to me that France has worked a lot but only in terms of vertical axes but very few cities have actually faced this in a global way but that's what Montpellier did they gave a large amount of money for a research project. So we were working with businesses like us. But also startups and also the university. The startups have come to this group at a later stage. And we really evolved on this topic starting from the platform. And then we moved on to more vertical subjects. So there's a transport issue which led us evolve on the level of prediction that we could do with a second version. Cityway Transdev. 
but also the predictions about parking and how we can calculate our mobility within the city. So we can consolidate all these results and you can see in Montpellier whether it's going to be hot, cold, busy. So Montpellier was a project that was exemplaire in the co cooperation globally. Because straight from the start there was a global point of view. Because all this data was brought together all over the territory and there was a the government called for different projects and then among the startups and 82 different startups responded to this to develop the application and this was really a demonstration that this project was interesting so now briefly for the next few examples what's important to understand is that analytics lets us become that much more efficient so we're going to analyze the data and bring it together in order to find solutions. Often data collection can be frustrating because you don't know what to do with them. But, and the topic so really we need to is applicate this to into real life situations. Analysis useful. To work on predictions. To optimize usage. With wind farms. Or on electricity conductors. But I'm going to focus on there's two phases. The first phase in the 90s was when we were trying to understand the cities, cities. with analyzing over 3,000 projects. The no. centers of management to manage resources are there to bring data and predictions to these platforms to water companies, transport companies, electricity, electricity companies. companies in the city. For example, other certifications in Would Madrid. We talked about Montpellier where we were collaborating together. And the data of smart ups, we've talked about Nice where we were talking about how to bring services together in order to bring the best value. And in Madrid, it, we're going to be very specific. They realized that they were very badly dealing with the active objects in the city. And that on top of that, they had providers who were making them pay for services that weren't taking place. I'll give you a very so the use simple census, example. Some providers pretended were saying that the plants were being watered when well, they weren't. So, thanks to CAPTA's census, they could see if the work had really been done. So the citizens could really see. And also ask for information with citizens to see if plants had really been watered. So at this city platform, they could follow a huge project of £10,000 and see what was actually happening within this project. So this is a very practical example. You know that France today really wants to be a collective country, but finds this very difficult. Because they're facing financial local problems at the moment. So it's very so important. It's extremely important that intelligence of smart city. So that everything correlates and about finds about productivity values and how to make this better. We need to make sure that we're not overspending. Today, we can't start a project if you can show local authorities that beyond just bringing a citizen a helpful service, you can also make money and have a financially viable project. The final example, another subject that we're talking obviously about the climate crisis which is extremely urgent and important topic. So we're talking about emergency centers that have been deployed across the world in order to combat this crisis. Which we've been able to, tack to set up in France one center 
we realized that we're that all the the captors were already in place, except for a few. Thanks to other people who are working in different local entities. So we looked but at a virtual reality. They need to be brought together in order to try and find what's going to happen. And in the emergency part of this, if you win just a few hours, thanks to this, you will save either human lives or millions of euros of destruction if there's an emergency. Using virtual reality in order to evaluate this before it happens. For catastrophic situations. How do we differentiate between what you've heard this morning, the expertise? Beyond being extremely senior in terms of experience, what makes it special is that we really focalize on the fact that EBM isn't capable of taking charge of hundreds of different communes. EDF, so NG. There are lots of you understand all these big actors of and they were working territory energies. In these sectors. They're working together. So we decided to form alliances with these businesses that are working locally. To try and recharge electricity, for instance. And we've only just signed two different two new partnerships with Veolia, who's been facing Lyon with a call for projects. which they couldn't meet in terms of how quickly they were reacting, in terms of financial investment, and in terms of transparency. transparency. They couldn't meet the good criteria. So they went out on the market and looked at the gap in the market and where they could bring their competences. So we worked with them to help Veolia win their project in Lyon, and then bring their project to London. So it proves what we're trying to show. In certain cities, we can work directly. But beyond that, the investment in our technological world needs huge industrial companies to work for us and come to us and ask for our competences. Rather, use us as a tool. Another example. This is an example that's been Before used. At the beginning of the year, it's the PSA. We've signed we signed with, them, with PSR, which is a platform for car mobility. We're going to help them. So to we've collecting collect data. their data. We've got the mission now to propose to the cities the information that, that comes from cars, but most importantly which makes our company special, to use analytical software to get information that's more complex than just how fast the car is going. But also about the noise and the pollution of Levels. that vehicle. And so here, the game is under easy to understand. We need these sensors in order to... Instead of putting sensors all over the city, we can use the sensors that are on the car in order to evaluate this information throughout the area. Finally, I'm going to present to you a society that is a open market provider. And it is a we very big this. valued company. I've shown you in Montpellier, Lyon and Nice. There's there is now not Operations in cities that can survive with just one operator. We need to integrate into groups, operations, research, and analysis. So that the so this proves once again that intelligent smart cities, cities are global, not just dependent on their territory, but also to their country and global.